Hola amigos, hola amigas, Dorian here from Hoopalux. Welcome, bienvenido, croissue, salam alaikum, chash, the yaxi mash, my friends. So today we are at my sister and brother-in-law's house here in sunny Swansea. Well, I can see a little bit of blue sky, but I, can't, I wouldn't say it's sunny. So anyway, so it is Good Friday and my sister had bought for her one of these G-Tech Air Rams. Now, I've never demoed one, I've never seen one up in the flesh, so she gave me a quick lowdown on what it consists of, and she bought the whole pack, because when you bought the G-Tech Air Ram, there was also a special offer then on the G-Tech handheld. Now, the handheld comes with a load of tools, it's really cool, and it comes with this bag. I mean, like, who wouldn't want to buy a G-Tech just for this bag? Isn't that just really cool? You could use it then as a... Um, Toiletry bag when you're not vacuuming. Anyway, let's have a look inside. We'll have a look at the tools first. So the first thing we see is this long crevice tool um, with a dusting brush on the end of it. The brushes are quite stiff. I wouldn't really go do any LCD TV because it probably would scratch it, but um, it's really good. Now, it's got gaps on the side, which I think is a really good idea because if you've got any larger particles of dust or fluff when you're doing your skirting boards or um, your cobwebs, um, then the larger particles will pass through the sides of it a lot easier. I'll bring you guys a bit closer and we'll have a look. It's just a quick overview at the moment. We then have a Diddy little upholstery tool. Now this has got the velour litter pickers on each side and um, it's quite strong actually, so that's very well made. Next we have an additional dusting brush. Now this is, yeah, it is slightly bigger than this one, but it has got much larger castellation on the side of that. Um, and I'm not really sure how you take this off. Maybe it goes inside. Does it go that way? I don't know. Perhaps it's for something else. We'll have a look. This is all new to me. This is all Chinese. On this one? No, the actual hoover. Oh, right, okay. No, I, I've got my director there in the background. She says it goes straight onto the... There we go, like that, see? Very clever. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Sister Lux. Uh, right, that makes us sound like a nun. Then we've got this large dusting tool, which is natural fibres, I think, because it's all different colours. Unless they're making man-made fibres to look like horse hair, but to me that looks like it's natural. This is really, really soft. I wouldn't have any issues doing my TV with it, but um, don't take my word for it. If you scratch your TV, it's your own fault. Next in the bag, we have got this really cool little flexible tube. Now this is really good because it's not as flexible as I thought it would be this actually. Oh, this is part of the car care kit. Thank you again, director. Uh, so this is for getting down in the side of the cars, down the seats and underneath. So yeah, I guess that's a really good idea. What about the brush? Is there a brush for it? No. No, that's because the long one that's that side. Oh, that's a shame actually. You can't get a little brush for that because that's really, that would be really good with a brush on the end of it. I know that I think it's Shark that do this kind of tool and I think they do a brush at the end of it, but this, that's really good for getting down the side of the seats. That's really good. And I said we get this bag, and we also got this turbine tool. Now, this isn't an air-driven turbine tool. It is actually an electrical turbine tool. The brushes, it's got two rows of brushes. They're quite stiff, so they should do really well on pet fur. And it is... 40 watts, so this has got 40 watts of power. Now, taking a look at the main machine itself, so this is a 22 volt lithium ion technology, so the battery on it is lithium ion. So, um, how long does it take to charge? I just put it on the leaves, I don't know. She puts it on the leaves, so it charges. Half hour, Half hour, hour two, three, four, two days. Uh, but anyway, by the time she gets back to it, it's always recharged up, 20, so it's full. 24 hours the last time. 24 hours was the last time. It did blow up, so that's good. <laughs> now, the one thing, I've got a little rating sticker here, which is just, doesn't give any information on it. Uh, the power. Yeah, 
know, we'll have a little look anyway. Uh, yeah. So the battery, you have to line it up in the grooves and then slide it in and then it clicks into place. And to release it, there's two switches, two buttons on each side. And you pull them in and squeeze and pull the battery out. Now, just remember that <laughs> My sister says that she has difficulty sometimes when she's sort of like trying to put it in. She's like, right, which way did this go in? So it's kind of like, you, you'll see it and it moves in and fits in and clicks in. The back of it, oh, here we go. Here's the rating sticker there. So it is G-Tech Type ATF, 22 volts, blah, 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 call for spares, serial number, battery made in the People's Republic of China. But I have to say, this is the first time I've actually held one, and it has, it is quite a, it is a really good plastic, so it is, it feels sturdy, I love the trigger grip on it, like a, like a pistol gun, it really fits in the hand really well, really comfortable to hold. Um, doesn't say anything about power on it, but uh, yeah, I quite like it. So, to make it start, there is a button on the top with a indicator light on how much charge you have left. Can't vary the power, can you? No. No, it's just one power. So if you pull that out, you have a little flexible hose, so that's really handy so that you can sort of like do a quick whip around in an awkward place that you might need to, especially when you're using the car care kit. Brilliant. Then that little flexible bit, it's only very short, but it's just enough for you to be flexible with it and not have to have a tube as a separate um, attachment like you do with the Dyson handhelds, with, with my Dyson handheld anyway. And that just clicks into place. Now, I'm looking at the back, we can see here, thank you, <laughs> is this little green, just looks like a little green thing. When you pull it out, it is the crevice tool. And again, the crevice tool just fits straight into the front of that. And then again, stores on it, back in its little hidey hole where the battery, battery goes. So we just, wrong way, slide it in there. That's really good. Right, so I'm gonna get you guys a little bit closer and we'll take a closer look at this um, handheld by GTEC. Okay, so I've moved you guys a little bit closer now so we can take a look at this GTEC handheld. Now, let me move you a bit closer. So you can see, it's very nice. It's got a bin with a shroud and inside I can see there is some form of like sponge filter. So let me just adjust that a bit. There we go. So like I said, you move the battery out like this. Then to take off the bin, you pull it out. Simply just pull it. It's as easy as that. And you can see underneath. And in there. Now there's a filter in the top. So let's take a look at that. So you twist. I think you twist it, yeah. You just twist it and the filter comes out. Now you can see there's a little bit of fluff there on the top of that. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna shake it off in the bin. Inside there you can see the shroud is all part one together. So I'm sure you'll just be able to wash this out in some soapy water um, to be able to clean it out if you needed to. Opening it is very simple, there's a catch at the bottom. That just opens out. There's a lot of uh, the fluff and stuff can collect underneath there. So I wouldn't really call it more of a cyclonic kind of action, really. Um, but um, as you can see, the sponge filter does trap a lot of dirt. So there is going to be a lot of dirt, fluff and dust, which will escape onto the filter. But again, this is very easy to clean. I'm just going to shake it out, but you can just wash it in the sink. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to wipe off the dust from this and I'm going to use this tool to dust it off into the bin.
So that was really easy to do, very, very simple. I recommend you do that, and I would recommend that you wash these just like the other types of filters, maybe sort of like once a month, just to make sure all the dirt that's inside it doesn't go into the motor. Then you simply, I don't think it matters which way you put it in, but it is nice to have it like that. That's a bit of my OCD. And there we go, and then I just push it in and it seals itself. Very, very simple. So, um, I've gone through the information about it, made in China, G-Tech Type ATF. I really like it. Let's get the bin on, which is very simple. You just hold these sort of like wings here and then just guide it on and push it in. Very simple. On and off button here at the top of the handle, if I switch it on. That shows the indicators. And the other thing as well, the director just pointed out to me, look at this. Yes, it's got lights. Actually, when I'm holding it to the camera like that, it looks like an elephant. It looks like a face with evil LED lights for eyes. Um, it starts up really quick, so there's no sort of like delayed startup on it. And let's check the power. I would say that's got about the same power that my older type of Dyson handheld has. Um, but uh, yeah, that's not bad at all. So, now, this has got the electric takeoff socket, so I assume you have to remove it like that. Okay, so, if you want to use the electric power takeoff socket, this thing, this ring here, you gently pull back a little bit. There's not much movement, and then that slides out like so. Then you take the turbine tool, the powered turbine tool, and just slide it on. Uh, it's not a, really a click, but you, it'll fit on. And let's try it now. Wow, that's really good. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put that uh, fluff that I took off, off the bin on the floor and we will have a look and see how it does to pick it up. Okay, so I've just put a little bit of dust on the floor and let's use this uh, handheld with the power nozzle and let's see how it does. Well, that's done really well. It's actually left um, vacuum tracks in the carpet. <laughs> it's picked up everything. Everything's gone into that bin. Now, I did notice that there was a little stone, um, and it did. Oops, there was a little stone, and it did pick up that as well. So that's done a really good job. Right, let's do a little test on it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to empty the bin, and let's just go up the stairs and see how handy it is for using it on the stairs. Okay, so we're at the foot of our sister's stairs with the GTEC handheld in, ready to go.
So there we go. We haven't actually done sort of like a me, you know, corners and crevice tools and all that malarkey, but you can see that that has picked up a lot of fluff. So that's done really well, and she only did it a couple of days ago. So the power on it, I have to say, is really good because it's picked up all the dog fur and some dust particles in the bottom. That is really cool. And it seems to collect it at the bottom in that kind of like lip. Yeah, that's where it falls. Which is really, really good. Right, so I'm gonna empty this out and we're gonna move on now to the main thing, which is the main GTEC Air Ram machine. So here we are with the main body, the main item, which is this GTEC Air Ram 2. So this is the second one in the um, Air Ram series. Now I've noticed some big differences with it. It's Emptying it on this is going to be a heck of a lot easier compared to the other one which had a compartment This actually has Comes out just by pulling it and you open the bottom here and you pull this along and it cleans everything out of it So what I'm going to do is I'm going to demo how you actually clean it now When you want to see how much dirt is in there you can actually tell by having a look um, underneath so just make sure that it's in evenly and then it clicks in there. So let's take a look underneath and let's see um, how it looks with the uh, features on the Okay, rest. so let's turn the air ram over so we can see the undercarriage for the money shot. And let's take a look. So we can see here a visual compartment so you can see how much dirt is in there. Um, I should see. I should say when you see that is full then that's time to empty it, but I would empty it after every use. Brush roll on it has got short, but it's got plenty of little bristles on it, and it's got edge bristles as well. It's a shame that they are not longer. They do seem to be slightly longer than the other ones, but um, I mean, th this is only was bought in January, so it's not old. There we have velour pickup strips at the sides, and a little one on this side. It's a shame that there is no ducting on the side of this to let air flow through on the sides for doing skirting so I'm not sure how good that would be on actually doing right up to the edge um, without uh, some kind of air groove it does have a rubber squeegee along this side and this also has a flexible uh, squeegee on it with these little nodules on each side so I guess they may be sort of like protectors of it when you're using it. I'm not really sure. Yeah, maybe to adjust the height, uh, yeah, like my sister said. Um, but yeah, so it's got the squeegees. Here we got the factory information sticker. So this is the GTEC Air Ram 2 AR20 is the model number. 22 volts, 100 watts. It's only got 100 watts of power. Um, but to be honest, with this type of vacuum cleaner, you don't need a lot of power for it to be effective. Um, and then we got the sticker then, so if you need any help to contact them. So if we flip it back over, there we go. Now, very similar. They haven't really changed the design of it that much, um, from what I'm trying to think from memory. Motor vent there to vent the motor. Like I said, this is the dust compartment that you literally just pull out. And I will do a demonstration on how to empty it. You can see this does have a little bit of dust on the inside, so you can see that it does actually get some dust in there. And the motor is down on there. We can see the green fan. So the one thing I do like about this is that the, um, the way it folds down so what you can do if you want it raised up, you just push the handle on the side and then it comes up. You can't have it on adjusted height, it's only up or down. So you couldn't say have it on halfway, it's only up or down. It's got a nice rubber coated handle on the front and I have to say it is very, very, very light. I mean, I know I haven't got that in there, but it's still a very light machine. To operate it, you have an on-off switch here, and this is the indicator light to tell you how much power is left. So if I just pop that in there and switch it on.
that tells me that the battery on there is full. So if we want to use it very, very simply, well, I just hoist myself up. You just pull it back and switch it on. So I've noticed it's very, very manoeuvrable. It's very nice. It's got lights on the front if I switch it on again. Warm white LEDs compared to some other vacuums that have more of a kind of cold light. Now, if I just push it back. Oops, let me just adjust my tripod. There we go. Now it's very easy to maneuver. I can see it really does maneuver from side to side. If you want to go under low furniture with the handle in an upright position, you can't. You have to twist the vacuum to the side and then it goes flat to the ground. That does make it a little bit awkward, but. Demo it under my unit of that. Ah. Okay, we're going to do that. I've just noticed, because again, this is the first time I'm using it. If you twist it around like that, the wrong way, then you can actually go under low furniture. So, okay. I didn't realise that this handle twisted quite in such a... <laughs> that's, that's really good. So if you wanted to get really low, if you turn the handle to the side, you could push it underneath your bed, even though it's not at the right angle, but it would pick up the dirt. But if you turn it like that, completely around the other way, then it would get under really, or, or lower furniture. Okay, that's really good. So, what I'm gonna do now is just demo how to empty the bin. So my sister, who was mortified that I'm gonna be emptying the dust, I'm like, every house, everybody's got the same dust. Don't worry about it, love. So let me just put you there so you can see. So what you do is, there's a little tab here with a little green arrow. You just open that and the bottom drops out. And then you push down on this lever here and that cleans the shroud, so you can see, and pushes the dirt out completely. Just give it a little shake. And there we go. I can't see, inside there is the filter. I'm not sure how you actually do this, but uh, somebody else can tell me. This is just a quick overview, really. I'm not gonna go into major detail about it. And again, if you wanna clean the dust off it, just get your little thicker dusting brush, which I'm gonna do now. And then you can just brush any residual dust on that side of the shroud. You can just brush it off. Oop, don't chuck it in the bin like I just did. Put it back to the top, close the bottom, and there we go. It's empty. So let's put this back into the machine, which I'm gonna do now. Voila, and let's give it a quick demo. Okay, so I've got you attached via my flexible tripod on the arm of the GTEC. Let's just push it back and let's switch it on and have a go.
Okay, so I've just finished doing the front room and I am really, really impressed with the actual vacuuming of it. If you have a look underneath, uh, look ahead, you can see that there are track lines on the carpet. The carpet here is uh, it's a thicker, it's a bit more thicker than an average uh, medium pile carpet, but I'm really impressed it's left carpet tracks. Can't the carpet is about 10 year old as well. Oh, see, the carpet's 10 year old and it's left carpet tracks on it, so that is very, very impressive. I went from carpet to two different types of laminate, tiled floor which has a texture to it and it didn't have any issues whatsoever. It did manage to get underneath the um, chest unit in the hallway um, but in some parts of it because of the design of it it wouldn't fit right underneath even when it was twisted but it did really really well. So let's have a look and see what it picked up. So I've got the bin here right next to me. That's all we need to do is just pull that up. I've only given it a quick whip round and my sister vacuumed yesterday. But look at that. It's picked up all of that. Um, the one thing I did notice it picked up as well really good is the um, dog kibbles. <laughs> it did pick up a couple of dog kibbles by accident. Sorry, Lucy. Um, part of her breakfast has ended up inside here. Now, if you look... I don't know if you can see clearly, but there's definitely a lot of dust which is covering the shroud. So let me take this over the bin. Uh, there we are. Release the little flap down the bottom and then slide it down. And I think if 
you do it a couple of times, then that clears it out. Now it's a shame that it's got this kind of like shroud scraper, but it's a shame it didn't have like a complete thing. So it cleaned out the inside of the plastic tube as well as the shroud. I mean, to have the shroud cleaner on it is very, very good. I wouldn't say it's super effective. There's still a lot of particles inside it. Um, but it's definitely done a lot better than the uh, um, than most of them. It's a good idea. But I would highly recommend if GTEC do another one to have a complete shroud and the inside of the bin cleaner with like a squeegee that can remove all the dust from the window as well, which would just do it all like that. That would be a very good idea. There we go, Mr. GTEC. I have just designed your next vacuum cleaner. Please put me into your patents. Okay, close it up. Put that up there. And then again, let me just move the bin out the way. Oh, and then there's the uh, little uh, dog kibbles I just picked up. And then we just slide it in like that. And we're ready to go with the dog kibbles I'm going to put in the bin. Okay, so let's just finish it's off not the video. quite the end of the video, as my sisters just pointed out. Um, there is also the filter <laughs> inside here, which I didn't know about. So what you do is you just pull this flap up, and then the filter comes out like that. That's what it looks like after three months. So that's what it looks like after three months without cleaning. Mm -hmm. uh, let me just get a little dusting tool. Ah, it's a sponge it is, so I'm just going to wipe this off. Yeah, exactly, yeah. No, we will get better suction. The, I would advise doing this outside over a bin. But I see, uh, if you just want to give it a quick interim clean, and you didn't want to wash or whatever, using the dusting brush like that outside will actually do a really good job. So I'm going to take this outside, I'm going to use the stiffer brush on it, I'm going to clean it. I'm also going to give this a little clean as well and then we'll put it back together and then we will finish off the video. So I'll be back in a minute. Okay, you can't see my face in it because you do want to see my ugly mug, you want to see the vacuum. So you can just have my t-shirt. So there we go, I've given this a bit of a clean out. Now I did notice that you take the sponge out like that, that comes out and then you can dust it off or wash it and clean it pop it back in. Now, when I took this out and I opened the bottom, I thought I'd be able to take out this green thing so I could really clean it, but you can't. There's a screw there. Um, it's a small torque screw, so you'd have to take off the torque screw so that you could pull out this plastic shroud. Now, I think that's a bit of a design failure, to be honest, because if this was clipped in rather than screwed in, then you could just take this out and then just give the inside of it and this a wipe over rather than washing it. It would have made it a lot easier if this was clipped so that you could take it out to clean it. So it's a bit of a shame, but it's still, still very good. Okay, so we pop that in like that, that fits in there, and then we can just pop it back into the GTEC. Uh, make sure that's up that way, and it clips in. And we're ready to go. So, in summary, this isn't scientific. I haven't ha had much of a go of it. Um, it's literally just as you see. So, what are my views on it? Right. Well, my views on it are, from the brush roll and the uh, everything of it, I think it's really, really good. Its Achilles heel is the dust compartment. That is its Achilles heel. It's not cyclonic. It's not very good at retaining the dust so there will be a lot of dust going into the motor and the emissions on it i imagine aren't very good they still need to improve this they need to make it with some kind of cyclonic action on it because this is its achilles heel if gtech even came up with a i know this is going to sound daft but a little bagged version of it where you could put a HEPA flow bag onto it, their own style, and then that would contain all the dust inside of it so that you could dispose of it. Or 
improve this to have more of a cyclonic action to keep the dust and dirt from going through to the sponge because its pickup is really, really good. If its pickup was a bit rubbish, I'd say, yeah, fair enough. But it's picking up dust and dirt from deep inside the carpet. So it is doing a really, really good job from the brush roll end. But its big negative has to be this dust collection box. It's a big, big negative for me. I do like the machine quite a, a lot, actually. It does a really good job of picking everything up. Highly recommended as well is the additional handheld G-Tech. It is heavier than my Dyson, I can feel that. They have sort of like counterbalanced the weight of it with the battery and this curve down, so it's not too bad to actually move around. I do like this little flexible hose, and the other thing I like as well is that you can have it on and not have to keep holding the button. And it's got really, really good power. The electric brush head on it as well, I highly recommend that. That does very, very good. I haven't done it on on pet fur or anything on upholstery, so I can't say, but I genuinely wouldn't mind having one and trying to put it through its paces. I do like the way the tools fit into this handy little bag as well. That is a very good idea. So all in all, yes, I would recommend one of these, but you will have to keep this bin clean. I highly recommend that if you use it a lot, clean this out regularly because this is its negative point. So it does do a very good job of pick up on carpets that I found, but you have to keep this clean because um, it will damage the motor if you don't. So there we go. Thank you very much to my sister for allowing me to film in her house. Thank you very much to my sister and her husband. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye, y'all.